which is funny. And like I manifested everything from a fucking free helicopter ride around New York City. Hello and welcome to the Feminine as Fuck podcast. I'm your host, Monica Yates, a period and ICF certified women's life coach. And I help women to harness the power of their period and connect to their feminine flow. In these episodes, we will be talking about all things periods, hormones, confidence, health, food, money, sex, business, feminine flow, your brain, energy, and all the stuff that goes through our heads. You will walk away from each episode with new chicken nuggets and truth bombs, as I don't have a filter and I love talking about all the shit that people are thinking but too afraid to say. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, well, this episode was kind of highly, not kind of, it was highly requested. You guys, over over like hundreds of you typed, not typed, tapped yes on the poll that I did on my Instagram story about um, wanting a 2019 recap. So um, that's what I'm doing. I have done an Instagram post that like has a screenshot of these things, but I also wanted to do a podcast because I know um, podcasts are really relatable, not relatable, uh, like easy to listen to for a lot of you. So this is obviously getting pretty vulnerable. Um, and I love my vulnerability. Actually, it's not even getting vulnerable. It's just getting really personal, to be honest. Um, so I'm going to read you guys out the list of like recaps of achievements that I've had this year. And what I really, okay. In which Womb wisdom I talk about as a module all about how to like properly set your 2020 goals and intentions, which is really important because a lot of people don't know how to fucking set them properly. And so they either don't achieve them or they actually manifest them like in a bad way. So like they manifest the, the, the bad version of it. Um, if that makes sense, I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, basically when you're manifesting shit, you want to make sure that you're manifesting like the good version of everything. Cause you can manifest sort of the more shadow side of that thing. Um, so, you know, being really, really, really specific is really important with your manifestations, but it's kind of like, it's really important when you're going into the new year. Like what I find with like goals is that there's often a lot of shame attached to the things you haven't done that year or a lot of pressure. Um, or you start the beginning of the year being like, yes, yes, yes. And then it gets to March and you have this massive slump off. And it's, it's kind of because you've put yourself on this like massive high and like any high you're going to come off it. So that's why I like to create a container for yourself where it is sustainable and it is long lasting. So if you're not already in between wisdom, check it out. If you are in it, go to the manifestation at the 2020 like um, module and you've got your guide and your visualization and everything, which I highly recommend that you do and spend like spend a really good amount of time, make a witchy ritual out of the whole thing of planning your year. That's what I'm going to be doing. I can't wait to be in the snow soon as I'm recording this. It's the 22nd of December, so I'm still in New York, but I'll be up the mountain soon. And I'm just so excited to spend like a couple of hours just with my like tea and cacao and it's snowing outside by the fire and just like planning out my like my year I really am so excited to do that and just reflecting on this year um I was even just thinking as I was walking home today from the witchy shop um that you know I've I'm in a bit of a I'm in a bit of a moment um because I'm on holidays right now where um, I've had the space to call in certain things in my life and they haven't gone the way that I want them to go. They've gone the way they need to go, obviously. And I don't like that because, um, it makes me have to like really trust and really surrender and really have patience, which patience is not my strongest suit. Um, determination is, but not necessarily patience. Um, so it's a bit challenging. So I've actually had a kind of rough ish, um, emotionally roughish past few days. Um, but it's just really interesting because I, you know, I'm so intuitive. I'm actually quite psychic for anyone that doesn't know. Um, and that makes this process even a little bit more challenging because I can tap into the other person's energy. I know what they're thinking and feeling. And, you know, they've said to me like, holy fuck, how do you know all of this shit about me when they've never told it to me? And, and I'm walking home and I'm seeing like a bajillion angel numbers. Um, and, and, and when I say angel numbers, I don't mean like two, three, two, I mean like eight, 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 or like three, three, three. And, and it will be like so many that, and it will be like just all these signs and all these messages that come through for me. Um, and sometimes being so connected can actually be really overwhelming Um, not saying that it's not good to be connected. What I'm saying is that, um, I feel like we sometimes put 
people that are really intuitive or whatever on a pedestal. It's like, oh, I want to be them. I want to be them. It's like anything you put, like you, we always put other people on pedestals and, and actually this is a really nice thing to even reflect in for next year. It's like, who are you putting on a pedestal because you think you want to be them? Like, and that's all from like your ego, right? It's not because you actually want that. And I'm not saying being psychic is bad. Fuck no. Like it's awesome. But what I'm saying is that you will always perceive things to be better than what they really are. Not in like a negative way because things can also be just as good as what you want them to be. But what I'm saying is like, don't get caught in an illusion um, of things and don't put everything else on a pedestal that you don't currently have. Also really honor and be grateful for what you do have because everything that you have right now is perfect. Um, And it's really important that if you are wanting to dive into those psychic gifts or intuitive gifts that you've got, that you are hiring the right people and that you are also protecting your energy and knowing how to do it properly. It's all really important. Um, okay, so I'm going to go through my list with you guys of things that I've achieved 2019. Um, I've had some fucking huge years, really, since my ski accident. Um, and, yeah, it's been like it, the past two years have been really um, – monumental for me in terms of my growth. Um, I kind of actually think that like my ski accident was a little bit of like a spiritual awakening for one want of a better word. It wasn't at the time I wasn't like, Oh my God, this is my spiritual awakening. But looking back, I was like, yeah, that really was a moment for me that shifted a lot. A lot of shit changed in my life when I had that ski accident. So it'll be interesting to see what my skiing is like. Um, as I will be skiing very shortly after this episode's released for the first time since then. So I'm going to go through my list and there may be some things that I have, um, forgotten in here that I will remember after I've done this podcast. But, um, as of now, this is what I've written. And I actually did this on my, just after my birthday, I did it about a couple days ago. Um, but I started on my birthday. Okay. So firstly, learn how to communicate with men properly learned to wear my heart on my sleeve. I really did. I used to be so fucking shit at being vulnerable and open. And now I love my vulnerability. I have a very, not very easy time. Yeah. I have actually a pretty easy time being open and being vulnerable, um, which is amazing. And I've trained myself that read a fuck ton of books, um, got so much better at trusting and surrendering. Yep. Learned how to draw boundaries from a place of love. Um, got so clear on my mission, fixed my period, Pay, oh, actually, okay, this one can be said, actually, because it'll be after my after my parents find out about this. Um, I've paid for a very glamorous um, week for myself, my mom, and my dad as their Christmas present, and it's um, a hotel they've always wanted to stay at, and I completely faked the whole thing, and I've known about it for months, and I haven't shared it with them. And I'm so excited for Christmas morning, which will already have happened by the time this is out. But um, yeah, I'm basically giving it to them, and I can't wait to see their reactions. And to be able to pay for a very, very nice place um, on a mountain in like our favorite ski place ever um, is pretty fucking amazing, like really fucking amazing. Um, the next one. Uh, uh, got an office in New York City, supported my dad's member of parliament campaign, experience, and I've always known dad's going to be, he's going to be the prime minister, um, experienced valley orgasms, became multi-orgasmic, um, was on the front of the Australian, lol, for anyone that doesn't remember that earlier this year, I leaked that my dad was, um, my dad was going, running for member of parliament or whatever the fucking right phrase is. I don't know how to, I don't know what the right word terminology is. And someone, obviously that's PR, follows me on Instagram and they saw it and I apparently wasn't allowed to leak it. And I fucking did. I didn't know that. And then myself and my dad were on the front page of the Australian newspaper. And for anyone that doesn't know, the Australian is like one of those really big newspapers, um, in Australia. So that was good. Um, lol. And I had like, I was in my, it was actually a picture from my 18th James Bond theme party. I love James Bond. And I was wearing a very promiscuous outfit with a gun strapped around my leg. So in like a red dress showing a lot of boob and basically a lot of skin. And, um, the slit was so high that if I, if, if it was on my body right now, you'd be able to see my new pussy tattoo. Cause I have a tattoo, um, on my bikini line now. And yeah, Anyway, um, the next one is, uh, what's found my voice for men. Um, that's been really awesome to come to in the past few months. Um, yeah, 
Uh, what's the next one? Drove a Range Rover, which is my dream car, from Aspen to Denver. That was so fucking amazing. Had transcendental sex. The best girls trip with my friend Jordan um, at the beginning of the year. Uh, helicopter around New York City for fucking free. I've manifested everything on my vision board this year, actually. Um, had my first in-person event, then co-hosted my first retreat, then had my first international three-day event where the room was full, uh, lived in a hotel, traveled a lot, learnt tarot, uh, was in New York City for Christmas, which I actually, funnily enough, I actually was like, this one's definitely not going to happen because I put it on my vision board, New York City for Christmas 2019. I put it on my vision board and then um, I had a meltdown at the beginning of the year after I was first in New York because I was like, I'm not going to have enough money to live here by the end of the year. Um, I'm not going to be able to live here. Like, anyway, I just had this big meltdown of like, I'm not going to be able to be in New York by the end of the year. What if I'm not in New York by the end of the year? And then I just let it fucking go. I was like, you know what? No one's going to die over it. It's fine. It, like, whatever happens, maybe it'll be in two years, whatever. It'll be fine. Um, I'm, I'm in no rush. Like, I do not have – I'm not on a time limit. I'm young. And um, and then I, you know, phoned mom and dad, and I was like, you know, do you guys want to do Christmas in New York? And they were like, uh, no, we're having Christmas in Melbourne. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So I, like, I like let that one go, but I left it on my vision board. And then next minute, we're all having Christmas in fucking New York City. And I'm living here. So that was that. Um that was just, that was just proof of like, I actually thought that one could not logically happen whatsoever. Um, like I'd basically been told, no, we're having Christmas in Australia. I had been told that. And then things changed. Um, I got into saunas. I learned how to love my breakdowns. I really did learn how to love my breakdowns. Um, I've been asked to get guest coach in multiple programs, asked to be in summits, uh, really got into my witch, um, hired a team, uh, another one that's extremely personal that my clients will know about, but other people don't need to know about. Um, employed somebody full time, took my first proper holiday, which is right now. Um, flew business class everywhere. Uh, flew Morgan, my photographer, to New York City. Launched my certification. Oh, I'm so excited about that. Went to Paris, uh, and which is interesting actually. So, a lot of you actually, I'm going to explain this maybe in a bit towards the end, but um. I, I know a lot of you remembered that I had this massive pull, massive pull to go to Paris. I didn't know why. I actually think uh, my soulmate, which I will talk about in a second, was there at the same time as me and I just didn't run into him. Um, rented my first international car, lol. Um, went to my cousin's amazing fucking glamorous wedding in Lake Como. Talked at events got super sensual, met my twin flame. Oh my gosh. Yes. I've met my twin flame and it is just as how they describe it. The sex is the best sex you'll ever have in your life. Um, and that's literally about it. <laughs> it lasted for a short time and it was very high and, uh, um, yeah, it was very physical um, the way that I actually met him, I know you guys will wonder the way that I actually met him was that he rocked up my front door. Um, I was doing like, um, I was having people come by my apartment in Sydney to find new roommates, basically like flatmates basically. And, um, it was super random. Like he, he found me off one of like the flatmate sites or whatever they're called. And he met, he texted me and I just finished Pilates. And I am somebody where like if a random number texts me, I'm like, fuck off. Don't talk to me. Like I'm like very private in that sense. I'm like, don't talk to me unless I've given you my number and given you permission. And I actually was like, why the fuck does this guy have my number? That's what I usually would be like when somebody's messaged me from one of those websites, like always. And for some reason, my hands were completely full at the time, but I replied to him straight away, which is also very unlike me to reply straight away replied straight away and was like, I'm actually like free in 30 minutes. Do you want to come over? That, it was all very like unlike me kind of thing. But I was just like, I don't know, just fucking feeling like I wasn't even thinking about it. I was just doing it. Next minute he comes over and I was like, just gotten out of the shower or something. My hair was like fucking gross. I had like, there was just like, there was nothing. I hadn't dressed up for him whatsoever, right? I was basically in the daggiest trackies, literally like tracksuit, a tracksuit outfit that has holes in it and opened the front door. And it was literally like, I actually saw electricity between us. It was it was something where I actually was like, what the fuck just happened? Like, I was so f confused. 
and then we were like talking for quite a while and then um like I showed him the apartment and then he said to me like well even if I don't end up choosing this apartment like we should get coffee sometime and I was like yeah yeah anyway and he obviously had my number and then he was like messaging me afterwards and we just got along really well and he was super spiritual and whatnot oh not super but like into it Um, and it was interesting. I would like read his tarot cards and they were all very, very colorful and bright and like the world and the lover. And like, anyway, it was just very, like, I was getting all of these things and I really thought like, oh my God, maybe this guy is like the one. Um, but he wasn't obviously, but one of the reasons was actually, we couldn't really hold that much of a conversation, which was super interesting. Um, yeah, it was, it was very random in that way, but the sex was, uh, the best thing I've ever experienced in my life. I was like, holy fucking shit. Um, and that was my twin flame. And then, um, and then it kind of died when I had to, when I flew to New York to, uh, talk at an event. Um, he was like only two years older than me and like, he really had to work on himself. Um, and like, you know, it was basically just what I got from the whole situation was like, uh, his ego, like couldn't handle me going to New York and him not being, I knew it was insecurity for him, um, of him not having his dream job and whatnot. So anyway, it like died a terrible death and it was fucking fine because it it was not meant to be whatsoever. And, um, like nothing's happened since. And like, I got over him like very, very fast, which is like a sign for me, um, as well. Like I obviously didn't care that much deep down, but it was like, great sex. So that's my twin flame. Uh, the next one was found my soul sisters. You guys know who you are. Um, I remember I'm actually going to do an episode on sisterhood wounding. It probably won't be out by the time this one's out. Um, but you know, it took me a long time when I moved to Sydney to find this group of friends a long time. Um, you know, it was actually just after I had a breakdown, um, with, I was, I remember, I remember it. I was outside my apartment block. It was in the rain. I was on the phone to my mum and just bawling my eyes out of like, you know, I was so cold to Sydney. I thought I was going to find my tribe here. I was so sure that I was going to find my tribe. This is fucking shit. Like everything, everything was just like shit, right? It was like a Saturday night and I wasn't going out. I wasn't having anyone to hang out with. And I was really like, I was actually pretty miserable. And then like very shortly after I met my soul sisters. I don't actually know whether it was the end of last year or the beginning of this year. I can't remember, but I feel like that it was the beginning of this year. No, it was definitely this year. It was definitely this year where it like really clicked. I knew at the end of last year, I had made some like good friends, um, but they weren't like my soul sisters. Like we are all going to have babies at the same time kind of thing. Um, so anyway, I met them this year. I moved to New York City, obviously, moved to New York City, uh, bought my first designer clothes. I've never before, like before this year, I hadn't bought anything designer. Um, This year I bought my first designer handbag, which I thought I was going to do when I was like 40 years old. Um, And then I've bought nice clothes since then. Um, I also buy very unnice clothes too, but um, I have bought some nice purchases. Um, I launched my podcast and it's a fucking hit. Um, I got really into my intuitive abilities and my psychic abilities, like a lot. My knee is a lot better. Um, I had one or two more surgeries this year. Why one more surgery this year on my knee to get all the metal out. Um, I learned to love being vulnerable. I'm so embodied in my feminine energy. Um, uh, what was the next one? Did a fuck ton of healing work. Had five figure months all year, launched my first witch program, made over $600,000 this year, got my flame tattoo, got roses delivered to my hotel, had an amazing birthday morning straight out of a fucking movie. I woke up to snow on my birthday and I am going to say this one because I'm so fucking sure of it, but you know what? Maybe it won't be the case, but we're just going to say anyway, I met my soulmate And I didn't know for about a week. I actually just met him. I was like, oh yeah, this guy's going to be okay. Like whatever. A little bit of fun. Like I'll just, I'll just, I'll play it by ear, right? Like see what happens. Like he seems interesting and I get, I I really like getting to know people. Um, I like talk to people a lot. I've met like so many randoms in New York. I literally met two guys on the fucking subway the other day and then we went out for brunch. It was very bizarre. Um, I've met people super randomly in New York, which is something that I absolutely love. And, um, Anyway, and basically, like, I met, I've met, i met him, and, I, and then I had this ginormous realization about a week after I met him of, like, oh, my God, fuck. Like, 
fuck. Um, without getting too much into it, there's just like a lot in the container between him and I of like too many synchronicities, signs, things, feelings, intuitive messages um, to ignore basically. So it's not comfortable. It's not fucking rosy and great. Um, if I kind of told you about it, it might sound – It actually, a lot of people have said, like, it's like a fucking novel moniker. I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, but it, we are not together right now. We are – he does not live in New York. Um, I met him in New York. He doesn't live in New York, though. And um, he has a lot, like, a lot of work to do and it kind of breaks my heart and that's what's been like really challenging for me and it's interesting how it's all come up um you know basically since having time and having a holiday um but he has a monumental amount of work to do like let's put it this way he's ex-military and his job right now is really intense um and it's like really hard for me to be honest because like I can feel I can just tune into his energy and like there was there was moments when he'd be like what does your intuition say about this situation and I'd be like you really want to know and then I would like tune in and he literally would say to me like multiple times stop like stop access denied you can't get in here anymore um you know I picked up on things very personal things that he hadn't told me and he hadn't told like anybody and um yeah it's like really heartbreaking it's not heartbreaking not being with him it's heartbreaking him being in so much pain um, so that's kind of been going on for me and I just have to be in this like insane, insane amount of surrender and trust that like in fuck insane amount of surrender and trust that, you know, over the next few years, things will move the way they need to move. Um, and that he'll, you know, hopefully trust himself as one of those guys where he's like, no realism. I'm like, okay. Um, so yeah, and it's and it's also interesting because I think a lot of people in this world are just like, I want a spiritual king. I want my king. Like, rah, rah, rah. like you'll know when you meet the man because he'll never make you guess. And it's like, oh, he didn't make me guess whether he liked him, whether he liked me or not. Like it was very obvious, and he made it very clear to me that I was the best woman he's ever met. Um, but it didn't mean that he was ready. It didn't, and timing is really important. It didn't mean that he could take me right now or that he could have me um which is really hard but I have to trust that um I don't really I actually don't really know what what you want to say about it but what I do know what I want to say about this is don't fucking listen to that shit on Instagram that's all the time of like my king my king you know like he never made me guess he treated me like a queen Oh, oh, this guy wanted to treat me like a queen. Like, there were times that he'd be like, no, you're not allowed to walk home. Like, I like I need – like, one time I was, like, sitting in his hotel lobby and he wasn't going to be home for ages because of his job. And um, and he was like, you're not allowed to walk home. You need to get a taxi, please. It's cold and dark. So he's like, he treats me like a fucking queen th- in the way that he could. But there was obviously limitations that were outside of his control. And I just feel like a lot of us – a lot of – women that are in this world we kind of put ourselves on this pedestal of like I deserve better than this fuck off like I deserve better my man would never do this to me and it's like well I'm sorry do, what if he said that to you what if he said to you my woman would never make me like never make me second guess we're human guys like we're fucking human um and like tune into your intuition like this scenario that I am in I would so not fucking choose like I would not fucking choose this and like if there wasn't everything else wrapped up in this, I it would it's so much easier. It is so much easier to just walk away and be like, nah, fuck him, there's someone better. And you know what? Maybe that's gonna be the case in a year's time. I don't know. But at this moment in time, um, and you know, like it's crazy. <sighs> and I've consulted like three fucking psychics and my own psychic abilities and it's and my fucking journal and my fucking muscle testing and my tarot cards and his fucking soul and it's like and I actually didn't realize it until I was I was actually tuning in to him one morning and I got the message from him of you're the one and I was like what the fuck and I was like that's a I was like that's fucking weird I don't know where that came from and I was like oh just my ego and then like two days later it like I was like do I walk home or do I train home I was just like coming back from like maybe like 30 blocks away from where I live and I was like uh 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 and then I just like left Whole Foods and I just started walking and I was like yeah I'm actually I, I kind of forgot about 
the idea of catching the train. I walked past the train station entrance. And um, so I just kept walking and I actually was walking and that's when it came through. And it's like, it wouldn't, it probably wouldn't have come through if I wasn't walking. Um, So anyway, basically let's not fall into the trap guys of being like, no, like I'm better than this or my king will never make me do this or my queen will never make me do this. Like tune into your intuition, even if it logistically, realistically doesn't seem fucking right. Like this does not seem he's according to Instagram, this guy is not quote unquote my king, but personally, like maybe I'm not meant to have, like maybe I actually need what is whatever's going to happen. Anyway, whatever. I'm just like fully really trying to trust it. And part of me doing these trusting processes and even like doing my ritual for next year and setting up my intentions and everything for next year and taking that time for myself is, Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Oh, no, I'm fine. Um, part of that is also, Oh yep, I am. It's coming. Oh, nope. Okay. Um, weird. So my sneezes sometimes sound like orgasms as well. Anyway, um, what really helps me as well is getting super witchy. So, you know, lighting my candles, getting to my potions, doing spells, um, drinking fucking lucid dreaming tea, like doing bath rituals. They really help me to let go. Like they really help me. In fact, if someone just said me, said to me, let go, I'd be like, uh, like I'd be like, okay. And I wouldn't be able to do it. I need a practice that helps me let go. And for me, like giving the power over to magic really helps me. And that's why I created the Witch Womb Wisdom program because I just feel like in this world, ladies, this modern world where we are so overstimulated, we are such overthinkers, we are really in our head, we have limitless um, options, potentials, X, Y, and Z. And I just feel for a lot of us, we need, especially as women, we really, and men, um, but you know, you guys can maybe create your own rituals and I can definitely do something about that if you want to, but this, this episode applies to men as well. Um, with creating your intentions. I just feel like we need a practice and whatever that practice looks like for you, that's fine. You need a practice that helps you to hand your, trust over to something else so you can let it go and for me like doing a ritual that I'm like well it's done now it's gonna happen and it like really like helps me let go of it and even journaling can be this for you if that's if that's that Um, and I go through waves like I go through waves of candle magic I go through waves of psychic shit I go through waves of journaling or tarot cards or booking in with a million fucking psychic people um I go through waves of doing or walking like going out and walking so I can think like I go through waves of what's or like talking to myself I always do that, like bath rituals I go through different waves of things um and I encourage you over this holiday time whilst you've got the time especially if you're in Australia because this is our big break for the year I encourage you to explore what that what that looks like for you um and just like oh fuck guys get really clear on what you what actually helps you switch off like what is it Is it going away? Is it snow? Is it skiing? Is it holidays? Is it friend time? Is it lying on a beach and like fucking staring? Is it reading? Is it massages? Like get really fucking clear on what is it that helps me to switch off? Because one thing I'm doing more of next year is switching the fuck off. If there's one thing that I've learned since just having these, you know, Wait, this weekend a bit off so far is like the more that I switch off, the more it, um, the more my like my third eye opens, the more psychic I've become, the more I've gotten like these insane messages coming through, and it's fucking awesome. Um, so switching off is like really important. Um, and also like think of your word for next year, ladies and gentlemen. Think of your word. This year my word was grow, and um, I think I nailed that one. Um, next year, my word is love. It's love. Next year is a year of consolidation for me. It's a year of, um, streamlining my processes and taking weekends off. Um, one of my, I'm actually making a rule book for me and my team next year. And, um, one of those rules is that going to be Saturday and Sunday is off. Like I'm not working on those days. I'm not doing emails. I am not doing client work. I am not taking on clients. I am not doing 
anything. And that's really hard for me because I'm so in love with my job that it's so easy for me. Like, hello, I'm on holidays and I'm recording a podcast. Like, it's so easy for me to just work every day. Like, it's really easy for me. But I've realized in the past few weeks, like, whilst it's easy for me, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for me or it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for my next level version of myself. And I'm wanting to always grow. So next year is really about love. It's about love for other people. It's about love for myself. And it's about calling in more love. So guys, if you haven't checked out Witch Win Wisdom, you got your last chance to do so before it closes. Um, get that manifestation module up and running. Do it. Take Use the guide. Use the visualization so that you can manifest the best fucking year next year. Um, make a Pinterest board. Make an inspiration board if that's helpful for you. Create a background for your phone. Get more in touch with the journaling. Like Meditate. Visualize. Do the things that feel, make you feel excited for next year. But what I encourage you not to do is make a list that is like really unachievable or based on your ego. So make a list based on like feelings of things, not like I have to achieve, you know, $3,000, $300,000 this year. Instead, it's like, I want to feel abundant or, or if you actually, like I, I said to myself this year that I wanted to make a hundred thousand dollars and I totally let it go. So if you're, if you know how to let shit go, great. Then I find if you, if you know how to let shit go, then you can write down specifics like, um, I want to make a hundred K. And then you can be like, and if it doesn't happen, no one's going to die. But if you can't let that go and you really focus on it, then you don't want to be writing that down because it's not helpful to you because you're like, you'll be so attached to the outcome that it won't happen. And like, this is a practice that I'm really having to work on right fucking now is that I can detach from like so many things, but I have to right now really detach from this soulmate thing. Like I have to really detach and I have to trust and I have to fucking know that when it is the right time for him and I, we will reconnect. What's actually interesting, it's like I manifested everything on my on my vision board, including meeting him, like, which is funny. And like I manifested everything from a fucking free helicopter ride around New York City um, to my, meeting my soulmate, to New York City in Christmas, so, so Christmas in New York City, to a six-figure year, to um, – like public speaking, like just so many things I manifested, uh, like business class flights, like so many things I manifested, including meeting my soulmate. But because I wasn't specific, it wasn't like I got to be with him, if that makes sense. I met him and it was fun for the two weeks that we had together. And then it's like, now's not the right time. Um, so, and that was like, you know, me getting a little bit impatient. So obviously the universe was like, right, we're going to fucking meet. You guys are going to meet. Then you're going to realize why we hadn't fucking introduced to you yet. Um, because the messages I've gotten all this year before actually meeting him is, um, was just like, not the right time, not the right time, not the right time. And a lot of it was also like, he's not ready. And if you, and I always got, if you met him now, you would push him away because you'd be like, you are so fucking wounded. I can't deal. And I wasn't pushing him away, but it was actually, he was distancing himself. Like he was the ultimate, I'm going to talk about attachment styles more next year, but he was the ultimate avoidant attachment style. And we actually do a lot of our attachment styles in the certification program. If you haven't um, put your application in for that, please do so. Um, the certification program will do a lot on that because it's really helpful for my clients um, and for your clients, if you're going to be certified with me, um, to know. Um, anyway, and he was the classic avoidant attachment style, which is hard for a secure because I'm a secure and it um, it's hard because like we can see what they're doing, but they don't fucking want to know about it. Like sometimes, sometimes anxious attachment styles are easier. I find avoidance can be harder in a relationship, um, generally for my clients and obviously for myself. But, um, yeah, like it's just interesting how it's just interesting, right. With like soulmates and relationships and whatnot, how it's like, I've met other guys this year and I've been with other guys this year where on paper, it's like businessman and financially secure and like wants to know all about my job and wants, and is like, I want to come to your event so I can support you and wants to know about my day and like always there for me and paying for everything. And, um, oh, and like t- teach me about Tantra. Like, th- like they're so open and like on paper, it's like, this guy is perfect. But when I kiss him, when he kisses me, there isn't that like, oh my God, like you are the one I could die. I could die like, like this. I could, I could kiss you for ever. Right. That's kind of like a, okay, this can end now. You know what I mean? Like I'm bored. I'm going to have a shower. And like, that's how you fucking know then clearly not the one for you. Um, so it's just interesting. And then, and then you'll meet the guy where it's like, you know, the, 
the most difficult job to navigate ever, the most secret life, um, the most unideal like situation. And you don't want to ever not touch his lips. And it's just like, cool, (laughs) fucking cool. So as I said, guys, this episode has been very, um, raw, authentic, vulnerable. I'm really giving you guys like a lot of personal stuff right now. Um, but it's just really to show you that like my life is not perfect by any means, but, um, you know, my ability to have healed all of my wounds allows me to stay really secure in these moments. Doesn't mean I'm perfect by any means. My friends can fucking attest to that. It's like a phone call every 10 seconds of like me crying. Um, but not 10 seconds, like one a day. Um, it's not that I'm perfect by any means. It's that like once you've healed your shit, you can see things from an observer perspective, which is really, really powerful. Um, and it also allows you to come into these situations, a healed person, um, and not anxious, not avoidant, but like really secure in yourself. Um, and with like a whole new level of trust, which is also like important and something that obviously I'm working on in regards to this aspect. So I'll keep you updated with that one, guys, but I'm really excited. I'm so excited for 2020. There is so much coming your way. I don't even know what it's going to be yet, but it will be happening. Um, I've kind of set some like ideas. I've written some ideas down, but next year for me is really going to be a flow year. Um, I'm going to set my intentions and whatnot um, over this holiday break whilst it's snowing with cacao outside and and in my sexy fucking sweaty Betty ski thermals. Um, but, you know, I'm excited for this holiday. I hope that you all have an incredible break. And I really, I really encourage you guys to take a lot of time for yourself to just sit with gratitude for what you've achieved this year and not just what you've achieved in terms of big things, but also little things. So also things like, you know, um, you know, having my first full body orgasm, or maybe it's, you know, having my first heartbreak, or maybe it's, you know, maybe you had your first job, or maybe you, maybe you even got fired for the first time and you're still alive. You're still here. Like celebrate, not just the amazing things, but also the quote unquote, not amazing things because they've made you who you are now. And that is so, so important. Um, like hell I survived a, fucking insane mental breakdown in Paris when my flights got fucked and all I wanted to do was come home and I'm still here. I survived getting tormented in the immigration office when I was coming here and I'm still here. You know, the universe throws, I'm just thinking about this and talking out loud. Wow. The universe throws some curveballs and I'm still here and I have to remember that and I have to trust that. And I've got to remind myself that if I can go through that, if I can, if I can be so trusting in those scenarios, I have to trust in this scenario. Um, I want you to trust in your scenario that you're currently in. Jumping back to the Paris thing, if you remember, I was having this insane call to Paris and I was like, why the fuck Paris? Like I've been to Paris multiple times, like Paris is fine, like whatever. And, um, but I went and I got this insane, I had this insane gut feeling and, um, I didn't meet, um, him there. Maybe I did walk past him. I didn't recognize him obviously. Um, and it actually, I didn't even like, there was no people say like when you meet there, when I met my husband, I looked at him and I knew for the first time or whatever. I'm like, okay. Um, but I know plenty of people that didn't know that as well. Um, for me, it was actually when he made a comment on my, the morning of my birthday, it was just like, it's just basically like a shit ton of fucking synchronicities. Um, that made me just go like, holy fuck. It just like slammed me in the face one more, one afternoon. And I was like, oh my fucking God, what the hell? Um, and I was, I was actually a little bit scared to be honest. I, I, the first reaction I actually had was freak out. I was like, oh my God, I'm not ready for this. And that's what made me realize as well, like, I'm actually not ready for this, um, which is interesting because I really thought that I was, but it's funny how that when you actually experience it, you're like, fuck no, not ready. Um, so, and I'm actually just remembering this like literally right now when, anyway, um, but, 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 but he actually lives in Paris for three months out of the year. So it'd be very interesting if he was in Paris when I was there, but Funnily enough then, right, it's like I I know that you guys would know this. I've said it quite a few times um, that after New York, I'm then going to go live in Paris and I found a a few apartments to choose from. So I need to just finalize that. Um, But, yeah, and then before I even met him, I was saying to my sidekick like a week before I met him and 
you know, and then she on our call yesterday was like, this is very interesting. You told me this fucking last week and you hadn't even met him yet, that I had been feeling a pull to also maybe live in London for a bit. And I actually fucking hate London. Um, I lived there on my gap year and I fucking hated it. Um, I didn't like the weather. I didn't like the people. I didn't like the vibes. I just really did not jive with it. But then in the past like month before I even met this guy, um, I've been feeling this like weird ass pull and I just kept ignoring it being like, okay, I do not want to go to London. Why is like, what is in fucking London? And I tell my friend Amy, she's like, just come, just come. And then I met this guy and he's British um, and he lives in London and Paris and then the rest of the fucking world because all he does is travel. Um, super, like super, 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 super fucking interesting. And I'm just like, wow, this is a lot for me. And this, this, this is the tip of the iceberg with the fucking secret cities, guys. Like tip of the iceberg. So um, just fully, fully interesting with that. But yeah, what I was basically saying was let's celebrate the big moments and the little moments let's celebrate the spontaneous things the heartbreak let's celebrate the days where you had multiple meltdowns let's let's celebrate the depression that you've gone through the anxiety that you've gone through the eating disorders that you've gone through let's let's celebrate the days where you felt like you couldn't continue because they are worth celebrating because they've made you who you are today they really have um I celebrate even though I fucking hate my ski accident I also love it at the same time even though you know, most of my meltdowns this year have been literally about my ski accident. Um, and you know, being on holidays has allowed me to have more time with it. We're all just being down with, uh, we're all just being like child's pose, um, child's, whatever the word is, child's pose, child's, whatever it is. Um, and I'll just be bawling my eyes out because I'm in pain with my knee. And it's like this, why, like, why is it still fucking going? Why am I still in pain? Um, this, you know, I had this surgery, like this happened two fucking years ago. Why is it still happening? But all I can do is like really actually like let myself cry through those things and know that it's happening for me, not to me. Um, And like my knee has been a massive catalyst and hey, the pain motivates me. Although it makes me like fucking break down, it also allows me to discover what else is underneath that surface of a breakdown, Um, whether it's loneliness or feeling like, you know, I've got so much going in my life, but I'm missing something or whatever it is. It also allows those things to come up sometimes that wouldn't have come up otherwise. Um, Hey, it's like even meeting this guy and realizing like, fuck, as soon as I realized who he was, allowed me to realize like, oh, So maybe there's a part of me that isn't actually ready for like my husband, husband yet. Maybe a part of me isn't ready for that final relationship. Um, cause I, I do actually, I'm very traditional in that way. I want my husband to be like the only guy that I'm with. And obviously that's out of my control because control is an illusion, but it kind of is. Anyway, this has been a way longer podcast than I anticipated. I've just been like rambling about stuff, but I know that you guys find this stuff like fascinating and interesting. So hopefully you have been somewhat fascinated Um, I hope that you all have an incredible New Year's Eve. Get drunk or don't get drunk, whatever floats your boat. Um, I will be lying by the fire reading and probably crying because I will have gone skiing. And I can't wait. Make sure that you guys are watching my Instagram stories um, because I will go skiing for the first time on the 31st of December, which will be the 1st of January in Australia. Um, and I'm probably going to have a fucking meltdown and that's going to be a good one. We're going to manifest that everything is hunky dory and perfect because I have the sexiest ski outfit ever. I need to finish my second ski outfit. I've got one and a half ski outfits right now. Um, but my, my uh, other ski outfit that's done is like, I'm like Mrs. Bond. And it's funny because my, the soulmate dude that I'm telling you guys about is literally James Bond. Um, so I actually like another, another example of one of the synchronicities that was, I was just like, Oh my God, stop was when I came out of the change room and the, and the girls in the store were like, Oh my God, you look straight out of a fucking bond movie. And I'm like, Oh my God, please stop. Anyway, I'm not going to go into all the synchronicities because there's just like, I, yeah, there's just like a lot there and you guys can just, you guys can just know that there's like too many for me to even go through. It would take another whole fucking hour. Um, so, so Yeah. Ah, <sighs> wow. All right. 40 minute podcast and me rambling probably longer by the time I put the intro and outro in guys have an amazing break. Please l- have a ton of love infused into your life right now. Love for yourself, love for others. Reach out to those if you need help or support. I know this time of year can actually be really challenging for a lot of you. So please reach out if you need it. Um, not to me because I will not be available to respond to you. Um, I don't want you waiting by the phone, but 
please reach out to your friends, your family, your loved ones. People are there to help you. You just need to ask for it. And um, do not forget that if you're interested in the certification, you need to get on that soon because over half the spaces have already been filled. The Mastermind and BABA, which is my like feminine business coaching program, they both will be opening mid-January. So if you are interested in either of them, you can already send us an email if you want. Hello at monarchyates.com.au if you're interested in either of them. And Shelby will then give you all the details. Um, things are going to run a little bit differently next year in terms of it's going to be um, applications that you have to do and then if I feel like we need a discovery call we will have one otherwise if, if my intuition is like yep you're all good to go then you would be able to set up straight away um, just for the sake of me saving time um, and whatnot I mean there's so much social proof now that I because I've been doing the programs for a year now that um, if you have questions and whatnot they're like all going to be answered on the um the sales pages and in the Instagram highlights, there is so much fucking social proof for my programs that I just don't feel like I needed to do those discovery calls anymore. Uh, I might do a group discovery call or something like that. Um, but or like FAQs on Instagram live or something like that. But, um, I really hope that you will enjoy your holidays. I said that like 50 times. So I'm now going to fucking go and meet my friend for dinner, but I hope that you enjoyed the podcast. Yeah. I'm actually just going to fucking go because I said this like 10 times. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you got lots of chicken nuggets out of today's episode. I would be really, really grateful if you'd be able to leave me a review and a star rating that you think is appropriate, hopefully five. And if you could share this podcast so that I can help more women live a life of flow and ease, I would be so fucking grateful. Make sure you tag me in it on Instagram so I can personally thank you because I know so many of my clients have found me literally because their friends have posted about my podcast on their Instagram story. And I just want to help as many women as possible. So by you sharing it, I would be so fucking grateful. And I'm sure your friends would be too. If you do want to welcome me, please do check out my website for all those details. And of course, you can DM me on Instagram with any other questions. If you have any podcast things you want me to talk about, any ideas, any feedback, I am always open to it. And I always love hearing what you guys have to say. So please don't hesitate about that either. I will catch you on the flip side. Have an amazing day or night wherever you are. 